Well, we got those picks and bands ready. Let's see if they can find that missing piece, maybe in the P's and B's, as we got those ready to come at you. Anything in particular you think they don't want to let Trifecta have again? Maybe a band goes Sinosure's Thanatos way? I actually, I don't really disagree with what Allegiance tried to focus out. They're yeah. really taking away a couple of comfort picks. They already did that. In game number one, they did That's the right. same exact thing. They were looking to take those shots at Trifecta's jungler, and for good reason. Sino has so much control whenever he's on these comfort picks like the Naja, and they just don't want to allow Trifecta to have control of that. And this is what I think Trifecta did really well in the first picks and bands phase, was they banned out a lot of solo laners. Try and limit the impact that Cyclone Spin can have on that game. His terror was kind of a non-factor that game, partially because things got away from him early, but also because he wasn't able to rotate on like an Erling or an Osiris. There really just wasn't anything for Cyclone to do other than watch because yeah. his team was getting picked steadily throughout the map. Really nowhere else left to go for him. And it's going to be the Raijin, in fact, for Allegiance. This is actually a pretty interesting pick here. Try and take that away from Trifecta. Weren't able to get exactly what they wanted out of the Scylla last game for Ocean, so let him sit on top of that Raijin instead. But this time, they put likely Sino on that Nemesis. And I actually love the Nemesis pick here. Taking that away from Allegiance, more importantly, Weekend yeah. loves Nemesis. So this is a really <laughs> <Nemesis>. smart selection. <laughs> You just had to do the allied <laughs> reference. Hey, man, the last time I made an allied reference, I ended up on r slash smite, so you got to be careful with those. Hey, man, we love them, though, man. So, <laughs> we're, not, we're, we're not afraid to do them here, but yeah, like you said, that's something that Sino really likes to play. Uh, and again, I, I do agree with the call and pick as well from Allegiance having, again, some more pressure. This could also potentially be the pick for Cyclone. He has done a decent bit of Kukulun already. Yeah. And I, I think that it'd be a smart choice because it allows Cyclone to be himself, I'd say. Things are already looking way better for ALG in my mind. Everyone that I thought had a hard time having an impact last game or on much bigger impact gods. Raijin going to be going into the mid lane for Oceans. We see Kukulun for Cyclone Spin and then that Geb for Nehrima. So already things looking better. It seems, though, as though Trifecta want to keep taking a couple more shots towards Weekend, seeing what he'll flex out in the God Pool. Yeah. Sir Ket being banned away, really like that choice. And I, I, I love the Geb pickup as well for Allegiance. I think that's going to be very beneficial when trying to work around this nemesis, but the Kabraken could also prove to be very difficult. Yeah, Taco, where's where's that Kabraken going? That's going solo? What are we, what are we thinking? That's a solo Kabraken. Aurora can play I think. that, I think. It, it, could, it could also potentially be Aurora. Aurora loves these super aggressive picks. Yeah. I wouldn't be that surprised to see it being Kabraken in the support role, but I would just probably lean it towards solo because you can have a, a decent bit of pressure with it. I agree with you. Yan is picked up by Trifecta for their mid lane, so they're going to have a lot of global pressure now to try and get around the map a little bit better, and that's a good call. Picking up the Athena to match, just like I was saying, some of the global pressure from Yanis. And that might be Athena jungle from Weekend, oh, yeah. I, I, I think, because it's been a while since we've seen an Athena jungle, I actually, like but I, I wouldn't be opposed to it. No, I, I think that it could have really great setup alongside of that Ryzen and just having that Olymp Defender of Olympus to rotate around the map with, I think that was one of the things that ALG was suffering on. Weekend couldn't really get those ganks off as much as he would have liked at the Ratatasker, so why not go full global? And this will give him a little bit more control. Athena's control, I think, is it's pretty easy to put out in team fights. It's, it's, it's just that straight up pull in as, whoa, we see the Kuzenbo locked in for Trifecta. Well, where is that going? It what, was only what? a matter of time. What? This is Kuzumbo. I, I think that's going to be a roar Kuzumbo at that. He believes in the Nene Kappa does a roar here, I believe. There were some buffs recently to Kuzumbo, and he, I've, I've always personally felt like he's viable. I hate this god so much, <laughs> but I say that out of like a love-hate relationship because sure. he is the anti-ADC god. You kill yourself yeah. on him, essentially, and... I mean, Kernanos is one of those melee, or not really a melee hunter, but you know, he wants to close that gap. And if you're trying to get up close and personal against a Kuzumbo, you're going to be in a place that you don't want to be. Yeah, he does have that reflect of those thorns, essentially, where he's able to return a lot of damage. So, as you said, could create a problem for not just Kernos, but even possibly Raijin as well, being piloted by Oceans. So we are going to see, as you said, Aurora take the Kuzumbo. If I known Aurora was going to be, if I knew Kuzumbo was going to be in the game, maybe I wouldn't have said he was taking Kabrak and Taco, but Kuzumbo's in the game. Yeah, and I mean, life comes at you fast. That's all <laughs> I can say. And I can't wait until 
something crazy happens this game, and then I see Kuzumbo every single ranked game, and that's going to be an exciting time. But that's for the future. For right now, ALG is really just trying to keep their hopes alive for staying away from relegations. And man, Yankee's kind of chilling down there, not decided just yet where he wants to go. Now coming to join, it looks like the mid lane. So we might see three versus three in the mid. And that's something that we talk about a lot now because we're getting a lot more options as to how you want to start the very beginning of the game. Snoopy, though, using that Hui Ricochet to start on those back harpies and secure a little free farm for himself. And Aurora already making use of that sumo slam from Kuzumbo. Just pushing oceans into Please. the wall. Couldn't really turn it all the way around into hurry win, but you don't really expect the Kuzumbo Giannis to have the out clear of, against a Ryzen. They're kind of just looking to break even in the lane. That way they can try and contest what appears to be the right mid harpies. And Man Yankee recognizing that uh, Snoopy was not going to be part of that mid lane, instead goes right over to his red buff and gets that picked up. So they are just going to handle those buffs as Trifecta clear their own buffs in the back. But it looks like they end up splitting those harpies they do in the mid. Cyclone Spin hasn't received his blue buff just yet, but alongside Weekend, they should be able to secure it, no problem. So far, so good, though, for Allegiance, at least able to secure their own buffs in the early game. And we talked a little bit about how Weekend's going to be piloting possibly the Athena jungle. It is what he went with. What is it that, we, that you're looking for out of the Athena jungle? Is it just the global pressure? It's not so much the global pressure as much as, it, as much as it is the setup potential from those taunts. I mean, a lot of Athena players think that you have to dash in and then press the two for the taunt, but realistically speaking, at a competitive level, you're just going to have that Athena walking right up to you and just dropping that taunt. She's even gone with Blink, I think, or rather Weekend's gone with Blink. So this way he can save his taunt, his dash, just like you were saying, to get away even from some of this damage on those back ends. God bless the days where Blink used to be 30 seconds and oh, no. Athena just just was unstoppable, it felt like. Well, it'll be a beads burner for them big time in this game. Only Sanna Shahura when and Snoopy choosing to go with beads, so Aurora and Kiki not so much worried about it. Early in the game, though, Aurora and Kiki could easily get blown up on these Kabrakins and on this uh, and on this Kuzinbo if they get taunted into a lot of damage. So I wouldn't be surprised if Weekend plays a little aggressive. I, I would actually like to see some aggression coming through from Weekend just because I do feel as though Allegiance has a slightly stronger early game draft. Typically, you don't say that whenever a Geb is involved, but I would just favor the Raijin more than anything else for Trifecta. And I'm glad you brought up Raijin. We're gonna, I, that's something I really want to see. Oceans couldn't have a big impact in that last game, and Allegiance were wanting for damage. So this game on Raijin, who can have a big impact early and for the rest of the game, he needs to show up on this Raijin this time for me to, to feel like it was just the silly. Also, we haven't really had too many opportunities to see what Oceans has locked away in that god pool. Speaking of which, great taunt there by Weekend. Stop some of that lane clear from Kiki's Tremors. That's right. Did shut down that damage. The channeled ability, so it can be interrupted pretty easily. And that's something Weekend will likely be doing all game with that taunt or with any other kind of CC they got available to him. So just slowing down some of Kiki's damage. I also really like uh, this Athena pick because of the fact that it is against a nemesis. It can provide some of the protections that are lost, I, I guess, when you're trying to mitigate that damage out from those Nem ultimates. But on top of that, you've got your taunt, which will really mess with Sino whenever he's trying to help reflect and regen some of his own health off of his health shield. And right now, we're not seeing Trifecta look for any kind of invades or anything like that which is not too surprising i think you're even saying you'd rather allegiance go a little bit early go a little bit more aggressive here as nirama looks for the roll out into the mid lane everyone's playing pretty safe so far through the early everyone's sticking to themselves and like we said these points right now at this point in week five they're important for all these teams so i'm not surprised seeing being a little cautious and that's just what i'd expect as well from trifecta because hurry wins on Giannis, and sure Giannis yeah. can move an entire team from one side of the map to the other but at level five that's really nothing to be too concerned about unstable vortex is not hitting you hard enough to be a factor that warrants fear and and with all of that in mind he's mostly just going to be looking for i would think disengagements if anything he already went back and got tier two boots is he going right into cooldown boots for that for that for Giannis? Is that what we normally see from her, her win? a lot of Giannis players tend to prioritize cooldown reduction just because anytime you can spam around not even if you're not dealing the most damage in the world as long as you're being annoying that is a win for Giannis players if teams will chase you around the map every which direction as you're just 
climbing through portals, no problem. It's still causing enough of an issue that your team can usually look for objectives or even better positioning for team fights. And if Sinosure is suddenly in your lane, thanks to the Nyanis ultimate, that's plenty of damage anyway. So he can make up for it that way by helping his team get around the map. But that's what we're seeing from Herwin. Likely going to be trying to go that cooldown route. Get a lot more utility out for his team. There's a lot of that in his kit between the slow, between the movement speed buff he can provide for everyone as continued aggression over here in this solo lane side from Trifecta. And Sino actually getting a slight tower shot, not really doing too much to his health just yet. It was only the one. But Weekend's been spending some time with Cyclone in this solo lane, just trying to soak up whatever farm he can. And that's something we know uh, Weekend in particular likes to do as another early Gold Fury is the call from Trifecta. Snoopy tanking it down very low, and there's no wards, no vision over here. So Allegiance have no idea this is happening, and they take another Gold Fury for free. Well, they didn't know before. They certainly know now, thanks to that sound cue from the Gold Fury. And right. Matt Yankee, uh, I, I don't really think that he was expecting Snoopy to be handling that by himself since there were two members of Trifecta being seen in the solo lane and then knowing that that Neilma was rotating the same around time period as Roar, it, it's hard to keep track of the Hunter there. And this lets Trifecta open up about a 1,300 gold lead now, which is, still, which is, which is pretty good, about six or six and a half minutes into the game. This is where they can start using it on vision, on wards, on the map, try and establish some control for the next big objective fight. But you got to be a little bit more aware. I'm thinking, are you, if LG is Snoopy, got to be aware under a lot of pressure from Neymar Met Yankee and even the ultimate defender of Olympus coming out from Weekend as well. Snoopy gets wild hogged Ooh. as well. And yeah, this portal's enough to get him away, but actually right into Oceans, who cleans him up for first blood. Oceans waiting at the end of the conveyor belt. It seemed as though Snoopy was going to make the great escape, but just caught out one tick from death and that's all it takes oceans happy to have that first blood that was one of those yeah no moments where you think you're getting away only into the damage though from raijin snoopy gets cleaned up and that's actually onto a really good target i was saying i want to see a little more from oceans this game and that's certainly going to put him in the position to do it sino sure getting taunted back into the damage from oceans but that nemesis shield keeps him looking good Oceans, though, already dealing a fair bit of damage. It's still only seven and a half minutes and climbing into the game, but Horizon, I mean, he prospers in this early game. Cyclone Spin is looking to, uh, to invade over here with the help of Weaken. Looks like they uh, weren't able, though, to successfully invade that buff as Sinosher does pick it up. So they invade, but the buff ends up going away at Trifecta anyway. Mm, Trifecta really just trying to be careful with their pathing here, not looking to get caught out, really just trying to defend their own buffs. Neilma actually the one poking his head towards Kiki's blue buff, but won't be a successful venture. Now, it's very early in the game, so the gold free is not worth as much as it will be later on. Is getting that revenge kill onto Snoopy an even trade for that gold free, or is it still a little in favor of Trifecta? It's still in favor of Trifecta because now Trifecta has control of that Gold Fury respawn timer automatically. So even if ALG were to look, try and have a sneaky sort of Gold Fury with Oracle Vision in their favor and even Sentry warded up, Trifecta knowing the timer because players do keep track of that very well. That is something that we expect from our high level players to know the respawn timers on those kind of buffs, on the jungle camps, onto each other's relic timers as well, like for the other team. So they keep a lot of that stuff going on in their head during the game. As one more time, Cyclone Spin looks like he'll be the one on there, uh, speaking of the timer, for those fire elements. So far, so good. ALG still only trailing by a slight amount. And uh, really, you see this kind of lull in the action because Trifecta, again, are, are just trying to play it safe. They know that their draft is going to be favored a little bit more towards that mid-late game stride. They're not really looking to pressure anything that they don't have to. And this team from Trifecta looks real scary in the late game. I'm always scared of an Athena late game as well, so ALG won't be any kind of slouches. But Trifecta, I mean, have the Kabraken, the Nemesis, the, the Hu Yi, and then Yanis with that one-shot potential, it feels like, too. So I'd be afraid of this, this Trifecta comp if it went too late. What I love about Allegiance's draft this time is that there is so much more setup and peel for Oceans and Met Yankee that you can see them be those hyper carries that they were lacking last game. And it wasn't because, like I said, it wasn't like Met Yankee and Oceans were doing anything horribly wrong. Their team just fell a little bit too far behind where they, they just couldn't make anything happen. But now, Mennyaki and Oceans will have those opportunities, I think. And those are ones that they're going to have to look for. In particular, 
I really think Ocean's going to have to come up big on this Ryogen for them if they want to get a chance to get this split with Trifecta since they have already dropped game one and try and get out from the bottom of the SPL right now. Tied down there at the bottom with Cryptic with only two points. They've been able to secure their tied for seventh. This way they can try and avoid getting relegated, trying to get sent back out and not being able to stay in the pro league. Because even though everyone goes to the gauntlet, not everyone gets to be here next split or next season. And that is one thing that ALG don't want to keep having to take their chances with, but it's a position that they're in right now, and it just goes to show that even with incredibly talented players on your team, the skill gaps are still, like, they're getting closer and closer every year. These teams are becoming so competitive against each other, and it's hard securing victories against these other teams. And looks like they're trying to get a bit of an invade over here. Cyclone Spin had poked his head in onto what Sinusure was up to, but not able to stop him from getting that speed. We talked a little bit about how the five players on the are all really individually talented. What is it, Taco, that sort of kept it from meshing the way we all feel like it probably could? It, it still feels as though ALG is kind of missing just that hardcore, pure mid lane style of gameplay because both Oceans and Met Yankee, they are so talented when it comes to the mechanical side of things. You can hand them any god and they'll probably be able to play it proficiently, but playing it at an SPO level against these guys like Hurry Wind, who have been around for a while, and Met Yankee, speaking of which, having to use that wild hunt to get away, Hurry Wind tossing out that space in time just for good measure. And now Trifecta, not really finding anything from it. Just looking to back off. And I don't think that was random aggression from Sinus showing that Yankee either. That was right when the Gold Fury came back up one more time, so trying to get a bit of a man advantage before starting up the objective. Instead, Med Yankee drops the, the Wild Hunt on top of himself, creates the space to get out of there, and Trifecta don't feel comfortable going for that objective just yet. Instead, having to back up, looking to try and reestablish some vision control. Uh, going back to what I was saying, though, with ALG, it, it's just that... Oceans and Met Yankee, they can play the mid lane mages, but it's never going to feel quite like what you see whenever mage mains go into the mid lane role. It's it's just a drastic difference, and that's because they've been playing at a competitive level for so long for that one role. It makes a huge difference. And it's a tough transition to make. We saw it take even someone as good as Bask in a while to get fully running from in that mid lane role as well. We've seen some swaps over here to the mid, but it's just... It's one of those ones that has a real big impact on everything that's happening along with the jungle. A lot of the time people are there with you. A lot of the time that's where all the fighting's happening. And if you're not on point, and the positioning's not perfect, then it could end up hurting your team. AOG spends a lot of time trying to make that double hunter composition work to tailor a little bit more towards their own players' comforts and their abilities. But now that they're trying out the mage route, it, it's still something that's kind of just a work in progress. I think they just need a little bit more time to build on this, but the problem is they don't have that time. That's right. This is not just the fall split, but it's one of our shorter splits, only five weeks, so there really wasn't a lot of time for experimenting or figuring things out. You had to come ready to play, like we saw from E United and LG, who are sitting up at the top, but we saw, I think we saw Sider in a lot of trouble earlier, able to dash away and not have to worry too much about it, but now we can go in and onto a roar. A roar, though, not really in any sort of danger. He's just going to toss out that Nene Capo and Having return all that damage that we can just put out. Actually, doing a little bit more. Look at that thing go. Yeah, he's he's, he's fighting for you on the front lines. No one would, would say that he isn't. Sinister's ultimate comes out on the Neyramon. That's going to be the target through space and time. Does smack weaken in the back as Aurora now is under a little bit of extra damage from Neyramon. Cataclysm comes out. Aurora, first casualty Aurora of this second fight. Oceans end up getting credit for it. And now we can able to turn right away with Defender of Olympus. It kind of looked like Aurora just pushed everybody away from the rest of the follow-up damage that was happening. A little bit unfortunate there with that Kuzumbo ultimate. Seemed as though Trifecta really wanted to try and lock Weekend down. Speaking of which, Kiki shocking down Weekend. Now it's Weekend's in a lot of trouble. Good shield though, coming out from Neyrama to keep Weekend alive. Gold Fury taken down by Med Yankee, so Allegiance do secure it. But now they could lose a, several members on the back of it. Snoopy ends up cleaning Weekend, and Neyrama's already fallen. Ocean's at least cleaning Kiki back up with some help from Cyclone Spin to make it two for one. But Sinoger, he's not done just yet, trying to take out Met Yankee, but it's actually going to be Met Yankee wiping him out. Snoopy still going so deep, though, trying to run down Met Yankee. Not able to catch him, just going to have to fall back on that one. So an even two for two, except still in favor for Allegiance because they got the gold theory. That's right. ALG now sitting on top of about a 1,000 gold lead. Probably thanks almost entirely to that gold fury that they cleaned up. They're also sitting up 4-2 in the kill. So now they're the ones who are out in front as, once again, 
had to take out that Nene Kappa, but Aurora's here. They're not going to be able to take this portal demon for free, which Elite has started up. Actually, they are. Aurora says, I can't fight into this. And now Elite just have the portal demon on their side, too. A great usage of that Defender of Olympus, just dropping a lot of damage on top of that portal demon and making sure that Weekend could be there to provide assistance to his team should Trifecta try to contest. But they thought better of it. Hurrywind was actually trying to secure that T1 tower. And now with Neilmon making an appearance, he's just going to have to back off to his own jungle. It's only 1,100 gold lead that Allegiance have, but it feels like their first lead of the whole set. So I'm sure they're happy to have a moment where they're, you know, where they're the ones in control. Now we get to see when they're playing from even, when Cyclone spins on a uh, god that he can come in and have a big impact on, how can Allegiance hang up against Trifecta, who are the fourth seed right now, one of the big boys in NA, it feels like. Can they come out and show us that they can play at a high level? Oceans, though, really doing a great job this game and hurry one's actually still keeping up in farm with him as well and yeah. he did actually opt for that pretty much full cooldown reduction build that a lot of Giannis players have kind of just been leaning towards just to spam out those portals spam out those unstable vortexes doesn't matter if you're dealing a whole lot of damage as long as you're being annoying nice two-man portal actually from her when coming out aurora keeping we can pinned up against the wall but wasn't any immediate follow-up with it as kiki and cyclone fight on the sides as well in the team fight. So just a good portal coming out from the It got uh, able to bring Osha's down to about half health earlier just from that poke. Draw some attention to a different part of the map at least. And with all eyes focused on that mid lane, Snoopy one more time just having a quiet game in that duo lane. He did have a little bit of an earlier death, but so we haven't seen him playing quite as aggressive as what he was in game number one. But I, I also think that that's largely credited to Met Yankee being even and ahead this time. Looks like Aurora's wearing like two cloaks, right? He's got the the hide of the urchin and like the the, the spirits robe going, right? So he's he's he's, come, he's he's warm, I bet, you know. He's got the health and protections from that hide of the urchin, as well as just a little bit of crowd control mitigation there. Ten percent crowd control reduction with that spirit robe, and that's a that's a really important stat, especially when you're facing off against a draft like ALG. Well, ultimate comes out though, actually hits the through space of time onto weaken. Snoopy gets credit for Matt Yankee, and now the whole team's here in duo lane. No real objection to go for aside from this tier one tower, so likely they'll try and force this one down to make the rotation worth it. And Cyclone Spin is, is, is hoofing it to try and come be a part, but that tier one tower has already fallen. Sure enough. ALG, though, not too certain about whether or not they want to traverse into their own jungle. Look at this grouping from Trifecta. Neoma actually placing that sentry ward because even he thought something was up. Fortunately, he did as they were waiting on someone to try and come around and get some buffs so that they could gank them there, kind of waiting in the alley to try and mug them if they came through one more time. So. Fortunately, ALG know not to go in there. They, they recognize something was up. Instead, they'll just back up as Trifecta do get something back to try and even this gold lead back up. Now it's only about 400. And Gold Fury is still not due to respawn for another minute. Snoopy just trying to gain that Oracle vision control. And for good reason. I mean, just having that in your favor is always going to be beneficial against a draft like Allegiances. So Hunter just trying to stay safe. This is what we said we wanted to see from him, though. Heroin, in particular, using that through space and time to get his whole team over there to that duo lane and make a fight happen. Even actually able to, to nick Weaken with it just a little bit on the way through. So that's some extra damage that they were able to get out and that engage. That's what we got to see from Heroin on this Yannis. And again, just a complete lull in the action. Trifecta not really looking to over-aggress their boundaries, just giving the respect to ALG and knowing how much damage and pressure their draft can actually have at right now. Well, these are some former teammates that we have here too, so I'm not surprised if we're seeing some, you know, a little bit of extra respect coming out from them. I mean, Kiki used to play with Cyclone and and uh, and, and, and Weekend in particular, you know, for, for a long time. So, I mean, they, they each know what each other are capable of. I'm not surprised to see a match between some old buddies, you know, sort of, sort of be this close between them. They all know what each other like to do on a, on a real level. If anything, Neil Ma's probably just happy that he's not getting montage anymore. <laughs> yes. Having a little bit more mobility and self-peel for himself with that get cleanse. As the, as the taunt comes out from Weekend, they get a good bit of return damage 
onto her when he's already half health. He won't get to be a part of this engagement if Allegiance try and start up right away, but he is the Anis, so his through space and time could bring him here in a hurry if he feels like he needs to. We can though look at the rotate on the back of the fight. Kiki so cheeky getting taunted back into the damage from Cyclone Spin, but no one there who has a whole bunch of damage, so Kiki's okay. And Kiki though getting poked out quite a bit of his own health, and Hurry Win has come back now after backing, but he still doesn't have those purification beads. He is looking to be target number one probably for Weekend once they start hovering around this Gold Fury pit. And even if they never pick him up in particular in this engagement, Hurry Win to get to position very, very carefully to not get caught out. Forcing him too far back where he can't get off the unstable vortexes that he wants to is kind of a win in of itself. If Elites could do what they're doing and force this Gold Fury. Trifecta are here though. Aurora and Sinosure Snoopy are all around. Gold Fury very low, but they leash it instead to try and look for a kill. Try and look for an overcommit from Trifecta. Start pulling it back again. Does Med Yankee, but Sinosure's looping around the back. Weekend really wants the Trifecta to commit, and this is why Hurry went forced into the ultimate, actually just trying to go through, making a presence for his team. Ultimate coming out from Sinosure onto Neilmon, but the sprint's gonna be popped. Now Cyclone Spin has Hurry Wind pinned, or never mind, it's actually a Yanis. He'll just walk through the wall. Now Aurora looking to return some damage to Kiki, so Chiki establishes the front line. Wiki, Weekend does catch back up to Hurry Wind, though, and clean that kill. It's one for one so far, but the health bars on Trifecta are looking pretty low. Cyclone Spin has to back away as Trifecta have to try and run. In the midst of it all, though, it was Oceans and Hurry Wind that were picked off to start everything off, and now it's going to be Cyclone Spin trying to chase down Kiki. Weekend short behind. He's got the Available, but the wall is going to cut it off. Just barely not able to get that taunt off, which could have definitely spelled the end for Kiki on that Cabracken. But Allegiance with their high health bars and with several members forced out, look to start up the Gold Fury. Kiki and Snoopy are here, but there's nothing they can do. Allegiance do end up taking the Gold Fury. Now they go back up another 1,300 gold. Despite the kills being one for one, it comes out in ALG's favor. But still, with two gold furious to their name, Allegiant just barely has the gold lead over Trifecta. Yeah. Just really goes to show how efficient Trifecta is when it comes to farming out. That's right. Not only that, they, Allegiance have a kill lead, too. I mean, really, by all the metrics we can see here, they should be further ahead. But Trifecta doing a good job splitting the farm on the map and trying to restrict ALG's farm to keep it even. Now they're going to force the portal demon. Weakens here, though, to try and shut it down. So a Cyclone Spin Kiki gets blown up right away. Neyramon gets credit for that one. Hurry went has to run away, but it's Cyclone Spin who's going aggressive. He's got the ultimate the Defender of Olympus from Weakened, who crashes down onto Aurora, forces his ultimate out. He's got to spin away. Hey, Portal Demon for Trifecta, maybe Portal Demon for Allegiance. This is a massive win here for Allegiance, forcing out Trifecta, making sure that nobody can contest them on this Fire Giant. Now everybody gets that free back to base, can potentially even look for a Fire Giant pull already. And the call from Trifecta didn't look very strong. No one was on zoning duty. Like you were talking earlier about how sometimes Athena could just walk up and taunt you. That's what Weekend did. He walked up, got the taunt off on the Kiki and pulled him into a bad situation. Now with the Portal Demon, the Legions are back, ready to start up the Fire Giant. Only Hurwin and Sinusure are around, but Hurwin is on the back. An unstable vortex through the Fire Giant. But Aurora, Aurora's in too much trouble. He gets deleted. Oh, he came in and gets immediately turned and burned by Oceans. Roar had no way to try and reflect all that damage back to Allegiance. And now, with it being a 4v5, Trifecta had to be even more careful about whether or not they want to try and commit into this Fire Giant pit. ALG, Fire Giant's already at 20%. Sino's looking to go in onto Neilmaw. Through space and time was dropped on the bed a little bit too early. Oh, Irwin, they stole though, it! does steal it away, likely with the unstable vortex. Now Kiki's using the wall to try and trap in Metniki and Cyclone Spin, but it might be Kiki who's trapped. Just gonna pull the rest of the team away from his own teammates as Weekend cleans him up. Cyclone Spin looking to go aggressive in the back, but Irwin steals the Fire Giant. I think Kiki actually just trapped Snoopy to his death, and now Irwin. He's got one HP, literally one HP, but probably nobody can catch him. Just gonna portal three to be safe. We can try to get him over the wall using that taunt just to toss out that passive sphere and still not enough to find him. And this, I think, is the margin between how good ALG are as individual players and why it hasn't translated to the success that I think that they could achieve. That Fire Giant should be their Fire Giant. They have a ward on the back of the Fire Giant pit. They knew where Hurry Wind was. They can't give up that Fire Giant to Yanis. Either way, they did. And because of it, now 
trifecta have bought themselves at least another seven, eight minutes in this game, I would say. it's yeah. And I say seven, eight minutes because even though the fire giant will have respawned long before then, it's going to be another dance. It's going to be incredibly difficult for ALG to maintain the pressure that they have right now because of the fact that Trifecta was able to delay the game, making it even more likely that their mid to late game composition is going to start to come online. And ALG really hadn't taken much off the map yet. It'd be a different story if maybe the Tier 2 towers were already exposed across all three lanes, but they got Tier 1s to fight through, too, without a Fire Giant. Through Space and Time comes out from Erwin as they look to go aggressive. Aurora and Sinosure make full use of those portals, but Sinosure gets turned almost immediately. Ultimate did come out from the, from Aurora for the Cataclysm, but it really wasn't enough, or rather from rather from Neruma. They'll back off, though, after using four ultimates and getting nothing. That was a great ultimate there by Neilma. That Cataclysm yep. catching three just completely halted Trifecta in their tracks. You could tell that they, all they wanted from that was Oceans. As soon as Sino ults someone, that is the immediate target for Trifecta. And as it should be, anytime your nemesis is go committing that ultimate, you have to have your team following up with the damage. And either way, that was that was some great peel by Neoma. Kind of just doing what we saw Roar do all last game for Hurrywin. Taunt comes out of the Snoopy, but no real follow-up for it. We talked about damage last game. Take a look at Med Yankee. He's up at the top of everyone. 17,000. 7,000 ahead of the next closest person, which is his own teammate, Cyclone Spin. They've been the ones putting out all the damage in these engagements so far. And Med Yankee coming up big for him. And Met Yankee, though, actually electing to build defensively for his last item slot as opposed to an Aussie or even an Odysseus bow. Really looking to try and have some sort of self peel, maybe kind of concerned that he's going to start becoming the target focus for Trifecta. And he recognizes he's almost got another item like in his passive. He can go through a slow if he needs to. He can go through protection shred or just additional damage through his passive if need be. So using some of that utility his kit provides him, getting some defense to stay alive a little bit longer since... Oceans, once again, is way down at the bottom of the damage charts. They're going to be relying on Met Yankee's damage really a lot. I will say, though, when you have to rely on your Hunter so heavily for damage already, I completely understand him wanting to have the safety for himself. But if that's the case, Neilma should just focus a little bit more attention towards the Hunter, knowing how hard that Met Yankee has been carrying them in team fights, as opposed to Met Yankee slowing down his power spike curve by going a defensive item last option. That is a lot of... A lot of pressure is going to be on Neymar. He needs to recognize how much they're relying on Met Yankee in his game so far. Make sure those Geb Shields and Cataclysms and knockups are being used to help keep him in this engagement as now Trifecta start off the Gold Fury. And having Weaken on Athena and Cyclone Spin on Kakolin is also two more reasons why Met Yankee shouldn't be having to build defensive. He should be able to rely they on his a lot team of protection, yeah. for that sort of protection. Gold Fury is about half health. Trifecta doing a good job keeping Allegiance from starting this one up for free. They're not coming too far forward. Now Snoopy's pulling it, but he backs it up right away. Weaken blinks in, not able to get anyone with that taunt. Geb Shield is on cooldown for the moment, so they won't have that available. Cyclone Spin forces Hurwin out in the back, though, so Hurwin couldn't be a part of that one. Still has all his relics available, though. Aurora just eating the damage from Met Yankee, trying to reflect as much as possible. Not really getting too much out of it. Met Yankee has lifesteal built already, plus more lifesteal in his kit. Just means he'll be full health by the next engagement. And we haven't talked about that yet. Aurora's been a non-factor on this Kuzin though so far. Well, he's actually top of his team in player damage, so I guess that's a pretty big factor. But it looks like he's not been able to provide the setup he would if he was on a regular support. Cataclysm comes out to keep Aurora away from the Gold Fury. Met Yankee ends up getting that one secured for him, but the team fight could go another way through space and time is setting up Aurora to come flying through to try and look for some low health bars, but everyone's disengaged safely, except for Cyclone Spin, who's getting separated by the walls from Kiki So Cheeky. The shell is good to keep him going. Snoopy goes aggressive, jumping in. Cyclone Spin still clinging to life, though. Geb Shield keeps him alive one more time, and ALG get away with the Gold Fury and don't give up any lives. Cleanse after cleanse after shell into shell into Geb Shield. It's just all over the place from ALG. But the call, they're, come, they're coming right over here. Is it Portal Demon or Fire Giant? Okay, it's they're going Portal Okay. They're playing it safe, going for the portal as opposed to the full commit on the Fire Giant, and for good reason. Met Yankee kind of just expecting this sort of call out. Kiki, he's not a roar. He can't afford to eat all that damage. They're trying to just get out. Portal Demon, though, is a good call from Trifecta. This is going to slow down the push of ALG one more time. If they can get Portal Demon off the back of the Gold Fury, then back and come back out and start it up right away, they'd be in a good spot. Met Yankee, though, looking to start up this Fire Giant right away. Trifecta have a clean way back in, but 
they're going to be expecting it. Will Allegiance. First comes through Aurora. There's a three-man taunt from Weekend. That's a huge taunt, but not a, a, a huge amount of follow-up. Med Yankee, though, is the target as Hurwin cleans up Oceans, and Kiki separates Med Yankee with those walls. Defender of Olympus keeps him alive through all the damage. Med Yankee cleans up Kiki, and now Aurora's in trouble as Sino sure falls as well. Aurora just trying to get out. Med Yankee, he's about 10% health. He can't afford to stay here any longer, but he's going to be able to live steal instead off of the blue buff, already back up past half health. That was a great disengage by Allegiance. Keeping Met Yankee alive in that engagement was so big for them. They committed a lot onto that. Kiki Sochiki drops the ultimate to lock him back off, and they just start trying to rein in the damage. But Med Yankee's putting up too much light steel. He's getting the Geb shields, getting the shells. There was no way for them to take that kill. Well, now he's got the mantle of Discord to boot, so having oh, that geez. added 60 magical and physical protections, as well as the 10% cooldown reduction, it should be pretty beneficial. And two Gebolts, if you think about it. Yeah, I guess it's essentially a second Gebel for him. Yeah, able to get another AoE summonies below a certain threshold. Now Allegiance are ready to get this Fire Giant started up one more time. And Taco, we talked about this. Trifecta really need these two extra points they'd get from cleaning up the whole set. And ALG looking to play spoiler and take it away from them as they're looking good so far through this game. Up about 4,000 gold, and they're the ones in the driver's seat. Met Yankee, though. Not feeling quite as confident looking for that Fire Giant just yet. Hurrywind kind of just dancing around the map. It was Cyclone Spin who was on Yana's patrol trying to keep him locked away from the Fire Giant pit. Once again, Med Yankee looking to bait in Trifecta. Hurwin's not here just yet, but again, he's got high mobility. He could be a part of this if he absolutely had to be with that through space and time. But Allegiance back off. Give the time for Trifecta to regroup one more time and then try and take this team back. Even if ALG see that hurry one's missing for a moment, they can never really feel too comfortable about things because you know that that Giannis is going to be back in no time at all. Just tossing out those unstable vortexes. Weekend, though, with a great blink ton initiation. They're looking to commit onto Hurrywind here. Hurwin has the Angus on him, but it's not going to be enough to keep him going, at least not for the moment. He does portal his way out, though. Hurrywind clinging the life. Sino sure cleans up oceans. Kiki so cheeky going on the Med Yankee, and this time he doesn't have all five members around him. Defender of Olympus, though, keeps him alive for the moment. Sight Kiki so cheeky wants to keep going onto Aurora, gets taunted back into Weekend, but Aurora's keeping them all disrupted with the Kuzinbo ult. And the Kuzumbo ult finally coming up huge here on top of Hurrywind, sticking around just to portal his teammates out despite being low health himself. And now an engagement that seemingly was about to go in Allegiance's favor entirely for Trifecta because Hurrywind lives. Hurry win lives. You're so right. They went all in on him on the left hand side. We can find a good taunt on him with the blink as well. But Hurrywind able to just barely escape thanks to the Aegis. And now it's Trifecta who are looking to come start up the Fire Giant. And just like that, one team fight 32 minutes into the game can do this. It's certainly not over yet. The Fire Giant There's not even near. secured. But who can try and stop it? Kakala's still not here. Allegiance? No one. Elitists were not able to stop that one. Where were they? They're they just backed. They just weren't there. And now Trifecta has a free fire giant, five members strong. That was that was actually a, a pretty big misplay by Allegiance there. Allegiance need to have somebody around that fire giant pit. Two people, preferably, who could at least contest it. I mean, if Cyclone Spin and Weekend are there, Trifecta probably back off. A poor Neilma was really just the lone defender there. And as yeah. a Gev, there's only so much you can do. He knew that if he tried going into that fire giant pit, he'd probably just get focused out and burned before he could even have any sort of impact. And realistically, it's going to be pretty difficult now for Allegiance to hold off Trifecta from the objective siege. However, there are a lot of towers standing in Trifecta's way right now. That's right. This fire giant probably won't be quite enough for Trifecta to to break the base of ALG. They have a lot of structures to move through, but that also means there's still plenty of gold just sitting on the map for Trifecta to go mine by taking down these structures. Now the gold lead is all but even 33 minutes into the game, maybe a little bit less than 1,000 in favor of ALG, but with the fire giant on Trifecta, things actually spill a little bit in their advantage. ALG are going to try and make a defense. I'm sure that Trifecta are more than happy to... I, I can't see Allegiance trying to defend these T1 towers. No. There's just absolutely no need to. 500 gold, not that much to be concerned about. Wouldn't be too surprised, though, to see Allegiance maybe look to take a fight on one of their T2 towers, usually after a team siege is one or two of those T2s. If a team's feeling confident enough, they'll try to make a final stand on the last remaining one or two. And 
I, I definitely think that Allegiance could be looking for that. That wouldn't be t that wouldn't be a bad idea. Trifecta have shown, or rather Allegiance have shown that they can definitely still fight with the likes of Trifecta. This tier two tower in right though might be the call. Five members of ALG are here in Weaken. Once again, perhaps looking to loop around the backside. He's done a good job of it with those blink taunts and that blink is available for him one more time. But Trifecta back off. The legendary Trifecta six man. Still dead underneath that T2 tower. Nene Kappa, he's, he's doing his job at least. He's, he's getting out there. That's that's all Aurora's really looking for. I still can't believe that it just, it, it's the run animation, I think, on not only the little one, but like Kuzumbo as well, when he goes into his dash for the sumo slam, just something about those animations, I, I just, I just can't get past it. They're a little ridiculous, yeah. Yeah, a little silly. But hey, I mean, Aurora showing the Kuzumbo can indeed be selected in a pro game. He is an option that you are allowed to click on, as has now been proven by Aurora. You can do that if you so choose. I wouldn't really credit a Trifecta being on the upper hand right now to Kuzumbo as much no. as I would to Allegiance, dropping the ball a little bit here. Uh, it, as to whether or not they're going to be able to bring it back, though, entirely different story. No, yeah, all I'm saying is literally when you're looking at all the gods, you can click on, Kuzmo's one of the ones you can click on if you feel like it. I don't. I still don't really get why you would, but Aurora has done that, and he's still playing it. Taunt, though, comes out from Weekend on the Snoopy, forces out his beads, but through space and time comes through, and that's the go button for Trifecta. Aurora is going to keep pushing in, but it's Kiki. She locks down three members, but the return damage coming out from Oceans was big. He gets a kill on the Sino and he falls as well. Nehrima gets credit for that one. Now it's Kiki under the Phoenix looking to try and get more. But check out Cyclone Spin on that backside. He was just going on Snoopy the entire time and hurry win. Weekend trying to give his soul laner a little bit of support. Aurora now the main target trying to escape from Cyclone's wrath, but this Kukulin is not letting up anytime soon. Sumo slamming away to separate himself from Cyclone, and it's still not enough. Cyclone still chasing. I love that. Snoopy did not think Aurora was in any danger. His support was getting attacked, and he was like, well, let me just get this red buff, y'all. Like, red buff's pretty good late game. Like, let me get that damage. To be completely fair, I think even if Aurora was actually in danger, we still see Snoopy committing to the red buff and then looking to save his own life, because that's just what carries do. Yeah, they just try and they're looking out for them. They want to make sure they got plenty of damage. Yeah, I agree. Well, because they're the superstar. Yeah, that's, yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah. It's all it's all about it. And I mean, I think Snoopy's, <laughs> I would value Snoopy for sure on a Hu Yi over the Kuzumbo. Sorry, Aurora, but uh, Nene Kampa, it just isn't doing it for me. No, uh, not for me either. But I mean, I trust Aurora. Uh, he's a smart dude, an excellent player. I trust him. He's, he's better than me. So what do I know? But either way, Aurora showing up with the Kuzumbo trying to help his team. They do get the tier two tower on the left-hand side, but the are able to defend their Phoenix. Now though, five seconds for the Fire Giant respawning. Trifecta already grouped around that area and ready to get it started, but Allegiance are all here this time. Can't imagine ALG to let the same mistake happen twice. Definitely looking to contest Trifecta this time around, and for good reason. I mean, they might have kept alive two T2 towers and all their Phoenixes, but Allowing Trifecta to have multiple Fire Giants is a surefire way to have this game turn against your favor. Well, it's about 38 minutes into this game, and a Phoenix is exposed, so Trifecta get a Fire Giant or just win the fight pretty handily. It's not too crazy to see them ending the game. They're all just about full build at this point. Only a few more items to be finished. Looks like really just on Hurrowind, he's looking for a little bit more defense. So at this point, they can tear down some structures and get in there and do a lot of damage to that Titan too. Allegiance, if they want to keep in the SPL, need to win this fight. Kiki gets taunted in, but he, he actually takes a good bit of damage in return to down to 40%, and he's looking the back. Oceans is really starting to swing away now on this Raja, and you almost wouldn't believe it if you looked at the player damage. I feel as though it's kind of deceiving because even though it only says 12,500, I can assure you that 12,500 has been purely against the carries for the most part, and that's why we see Oceans with four kills in tow. Herwin looping around the back for the through space and time. Oceans Oof. gets deleted by the through space and time unstable vortex combo. Now it's 5v4 in favor of Trifecta. Sinosher blinking onto the back on the Met Yankee, trying to shut him down using the beads to keep up the aggression. Now he's got to escape. Nehruma, though, is very low. He ends up falling two for one, and Trifecta's not done yet. And look at Aurora. He's coming in with the sumo slam weekend, popping his own thorns, but everybody from Trifecta just ignoring him entirely. Not even the least bit concerned about 
all weekend. Now he's caught their attention. Now he's definitely dead. Cyclone's been blinks in for the knockup, but immediately gets turned on. He still has the leap available, but I think you might have thrown your life away, young man. Kiki so cheeky cleans that one up. Four dead for Allegiance, only one for Trifecta. They turn back towards the fire giant off the back of an excellent play from Hurwin. And Sina really just bit off a little bit more than he could chew in that engagement, yeah. but I, I do think that the mentality behind his aggression was appropriate. He had met Yankee and Cyclone Spin on top of him and drawing those two so separated from the fight. That's kind of what Trifecta has been doing in these past couple of engagements is just separating that fight greatly. You've got Snoopy out on zone patrol right now. They're trying to wait on this fire giant until Cyanosia responds, yeah. which smart idea here. They know that there's no way for Allegis to contest this, even if they wait a few more seconds, and that's what they do. They get this so Sinusher can have that Fire Giant buff as well. All five members now of Trifecta have it. Portal Demon going to be secured as well, so they can make their way back into the map, and that fight goes well and away in favor of Trifecta. Yes, Hurwin starts it off very well, but I agree. I think that Her I think that Sinusher going forward and forcing all those cooldowns and relics out, even though he gave up his life, was well worth it. Trifecta were able to keep stomping the team fight afterwards. Now they're up. I mean, the gold's not super important. They're up 6,000 gold, but having the Fire Giant 40 minutes into the game, now Elite's going to have a hard time defending. And Nilma making the smart choice here. He has the Emperor's Armor already, which is going to be incredibly important here because having that boosted tower for their defense is going to make a, a pretty big impact, I think, against Trifecta since Aurora and Kiki have typically been needing to commit to that back line in order for Trifecta to secure kills. Now they'll be able to come in, try and get some pressure on this Tier 2 tower, ALG. Look like they kind of do want to fight a little bit on this Tier 2 tower in mid. Tier 2 in right falls without any kind of say from ALG. And they back off the Tier 2 as well. I think this is a good call. Instead, let's fight on this Phoenix and try and stop him. Because the fights have been close all game. Allegiance certainly still have a chance to win this one. And Trifecta, actually, now that they've taken both of those T2 towers, it's going to be the mid lane Phoenix at first focus. and. Actually, spreading things out a little bit, wanting to pull up the creep waves. And I, I like this decision making here to have the creeps pushing in from both directions. Actually, all of the waves are pushed in Trifecta's favor right now. And here's one benefit from that Nene -Ne -Ne Kappa. It can pop the Unseele? Un Unseele passive? On Unkele. Unkele passive. So, hey, you know, yeah. That's a thing you can do. Aurora gets pulled in, taking a good bit of damage, but just backs on up, no problem. So that's some cycles he's got to worry about a little bit, I guess. Yeah. And right now, Kiki having no issues taking up this Phoenix so far. Although these shots are starting to hurt a little bit. He's starting Touch to feel it. Time. One more time through the back end of the fight. Suns are raining down from Snoopy onto a roar, but they've created plenty of space. Phoenix already very low. Knockup from Cycle's been to two members, though, that does shut down some of the DPS, but only for the moment. Now Snoopy is going to be the call. And Snoopy is actually just trying to get away, looking to buy himself some time, but the defender of Olympus is going to come crashing down on top of him instead. A roar going to get through thanks to that portal from Hurrywin, but we can following him up immediately with the blink. Trifecta give up their AD carry, but they do get that Phoenix on the left-hand side. So they trade one life away. They saw Fire Giant on the other four members. Phoenix is down. That one will be weakened for the rest of the game. Not weaken the player, but in a weakened state as Trifecta look to try and clean up a 2-0. If Allegiance lose this game, though, I, I just can't help but pull it back every single time to that first Fire Giant that Trifecta just took for free. Yeah. That was where they got the Tier 2 tower that opened up this push onto that very Phoenix, that left side Phoenix. It's one more thing that could have stood in their way. Once, you know, less gold, less experience they could have gotten to even things out. You got to make sure you're around for those objectives. It's just so unfortunate. It feels like a little bit of the bad news bears for Allegiance. It's kind of been the song for them this split. Just Ardeo's always so game. unlucky. Ardeo's not in this game. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. Not that one, but it, it, it does seem as though Allegiance have just been so unlucky in a lot of their sets where just one thing always goes wrong every single game. I agree. I, I, ALG have been are been very close in all in most of the sets that they play. I certainly wouldn't say all of them, but Trifecta, if they do 2-0 them here, it's not as if it was a stomp by any means. ALG played very well throughout this set. A little bit of a lapse of focus, maybe a little bit of miscommunication, maybe, but Trifecta found a way to get back into this, and they haven't won just yet, but things are starting to look definitely in their favor. Fire Giant about to fall off, but that Phoenix has fallen, and they got Fire Minions that ALG have to worry about now. Ocean's going to be the one clearing out those Fire Creeps from the left-hand side. 
However, still have to worry about Trifecta. Snoopy has respawned, been awake for a while now, and he's going to take the Gold Fury, I think, just because why not just get a little bit more gold online to maybe buy a pot or two. Some of these players might be approaching even that 3k in hand gold threshold, so it's hard, hard to say just yet. Just kind of waiting at that timer until the Fire Giant comes up one more time in 30 more seconds to go. And that looks like what they want. They want to get that Fire Giant, then make the push, try and take down a few more Phoenixes if they can. ALG are grouped up down here, though. It looks like they do want to try and maybe make a defense on this Fire Giant and not give it up for free. And Aurora is really just trying to stay in the way popped on Celia of again. Trifecta. And now it's actually Hurry when you popped his ultimate, trying to chase down Oceans. Good Cataclysm comes out from Neyramon to slow down the aggression. But the ultimate from Kiki locks Ocean in place. And that's a roar going in, returning a bunch of damage with that Reflect. Ocean's very low and forced out of the fight very early. Weakened in the back line with no one around to help him out. Snoopy drops his sons down. But everyone from ALG are able to get on out of there. Met Yankee and Oceans almost kill themselves on a roar. Yeah. And that's the kind of reflect that's just absolutely insane to handle, especially with the Nemesis reflect as well. I believe they Met Yankee actually took quite a lot of damage from that reflection. And now it's only Cyclone Spin trying to defend, but Fire Giant's already down for the count. Hurwin getting the final hit on that one. Well, that's why he's way up at the top of the player damage. I don't, that's not his damage, that's, that's Met Yankee's damage. That's got him sitting up there looking so good. Well, he's way up at the top with 26,000. But at this point, Trifecta able to take the Fire Giant, no problem. Take the Portal Demon. That's also in their favor. And now they're looking to make their final push. Allegiance don't lose anybody in that last fight, but they lose something more important, which is the structure. Now the pressure is all on Trifecta to come down and make this push happen. Left Hand Phoenix will be respawning here pretty soon, though, for Allegiance. So they've at least got a little sigh of relief happening there. Although I'd imagine that Trifecta is probably just going to look to aggress immediately onto that Phoenix, not wanting to allow it to regen a whole lot. If Aurora wins this game, will Kuzumbo have a 100% win rate? Has anyone else picked him at the split? He's been played, and he lost. Okay, so he lost. Well, then there you go. It won't be a quite 100% Aurora. I'm sure that's what he would have liked. But now, though, he'll have Kuzumbo at least looking a little bit better with the stats if they do indeed pull off this win, which hasn't happened just yet. But that's what they're going to be looking to do. Trifecta look to come push down on this already weakened Phoenix, which just recently respawned, get that cleared up and clear path into the Titan, try and take it 2-0 and improve their positioning as they are currently 4C. The problem here is that Allegiance never know when to expect that through space and time to just come flying through the wall at them. Even Hurryone right now placing those zoning portals, but Aurora is not a zoning portal any longer. He's just running right into the mix of everybody. Aurora just kind of running at them, actually pushes Neyrama back onto damage, and there's the through space and time you spoke about Oceans in some trouble as is Met Yankee. Both of them have to back up. Phoenix, though, has already fallen. The Suns come raining down from Snoopy. That lets him clean up, weaken the first casualty of this engagement. Now Nehruma is in trouble as he falls. The ultimate comes out from Oceans as well, but it feels like a little bit too little too late as Trifecta take the left Phoenix and group up to take the Phoenix in mid. Only three members alive right now for Allegiance to try and defend this five-man strong fire giant team of Trifecta. Aurora dropping that Cruising Bowl ultimate just for fun, really, and just trying to get away. Wanted to create a little bit of spacing between himself and Matt Yankee, who was actually trying to swing away at him with those autos. Only one Phoenix left standing for Allegiance. Only three members left standing for Allegiance. Blink in from Cyclone Spin isn't able to get the knock up off onto anybody, and now they're going to turn their attention onto him. Sinosure chasing him down, slowing him as well, but it's the Phoenix that's the real goal for them. It ends up falling. All three Phoenixes are down. Now Trifecta are ready to make their final push in. They still got Fire Giant on everybody. Still only three members left as they look to end. But it's about 20 seconds until Weekend and Nyama will respawn, and now the call is on. Everybody's just committing to this Titan. Met Yankee He's being pushed out of the way by a roar. He can't even go anywhere near. And that's going to be a 2-0 victory for Trifecta. Yes, it came out 2-0, but it was hard fought by Trifecta. ALG didn't give the, that setup for free. They played very well through it, but maybe just a couple, one or two missed calls. And Trifecta sees that opportunity and they take both games. Things are looking incredibly grim right now for Allegiance. Yeah. I, it's going to be so difficult for them. They pretty much need... I, I believe, a set victory in order to even have a chance of surviving relegations. But I, I, I don't know. I'm pretty sure even then, as long as Noble win a game, it's out. Well, either way, we have 
Tolly and Aggro standing by to try and break this down for you. They'll go through all those scenarios and let you know what ALG's got up. Take it away, boys. Thank you very much, guys. Welcome to the, the final end of your Thursday on the SPL. I'm Aggro, joined by Anatoly. And Tolly, uh, actually, hold on. Do you hear that? Is that Aurora's giggles all the way from Illinois about being top damage on his team with Kuzenbo? I mean, honestly, Kuzenbo, if anyone would have whooped out the Kuzenbo, it would have definitely been Aurora. Let's Here be we real. are. And this is where the reign of terror begins. I've been waiting for this. I'm very sad about it. But I, I honestly think Kuzenvo is going to be able to do a lot of work, given the right sort of circumstances. And Aurora sure. kind of creates his own there. Trifecta come out with a 2-0 victory over Allegiance, but it really wasn't as close as I think we may have expected coming in. No, not at all, honestly. The way ALG have normally known to be playing is leaning towards weak and leaning towards Cyclone Spin as well, but they couldn't really execute it from start to finish and close out the game, simply because Harrowen kept them in the game with that Fire Giant Steel. That was huge game two from Harrowen, being able to steal that objective away from Allegiance, who really did. It, it's so it, it's got to be frustrating to be a fan of this team because they've got so much talent yep. and they play well in, in a lot of games. And then some games they just don't show up. Other games they play well for the first half and and then don't show up after that. I mean, is there any explanation? It's just I think that not necessarily that they're too comfortable. I think other teams have caught up to these players individually because honestly, if you think about these two players, we can cycle and spin specifically back in season three and two, the way they were dominating the whole entire scene, now they're in a position where they're bottom four of the North American standings and they could possibly be relegated. Yeah, the top four for North America pretty much set with yep. Trifecta finding the 2-0 here. Bottom four also locked in, but absolutely no one has their seeds finalized. That's Allegiance versus Trifecta. The earlier North America game was E United up against Vigilant. Yep. These two teams, again, expected to see E United come out with a 2-0 victory here. They're undefeated so far coming into it, and they end up with it. That's right. The way Scream was playing, honestly, in the f first game with the Ratatasker was just amazing. The global pressure that he did, the bait that Benji did. It, this is the bait right here. This is the bait that Mana Warrior did, and then the counter bait. Uh, this is first blood here, heading into the eight-minute mark of just non-relenting pressure. Scream was able to just rotate everywhere effortlessly. Is there any player who has improved as quickly as Scream did during the fall split? Because he went from a jungler who was formerly a, a really great jungler and it had those game carrying abilities to a jungler that wasn't really doing a lot for his team and all of a sudden he might be the best jungler in NA. I would have to agree with you in terms of the fall split. No other player can come to mind so quickly but other splits before this I would definitely think of Oceans who have made like such leaps and bounds whenever he was first inducted. Skeledon as well comes to mind. Not necessarily this split but the previous one. Well Scream is certainly a big reason why e United continues to be undefeated during the fall split. Let's take a look at the standings as the United is going to be right up top with Luminosity. They face off against one another on Sunday, but as at the bottom, as you mentioned, Allegiance right there, tied for very last with Cryptic. Mathematically, no team in North America in the bottom four is safe from relegations. And with uh, United against LG, and then we got Space Station against Trifecta, those teams are guaranteed to go Super Regionals, but they're still battling for that important seeding. And we've seen how just just how important that seeding can be at Super Regionals when it comes down to it. I mean, these are your last chance to go to Worlds, and you don't want to end up with one of those matchups where it's like, man, we got to play. You know, even trifecta first round, but that's the problem. You're going to Super Regionals. Every team is going to be completely sick. And that's just the North American side of things. Europe is just a whole nother ball game, honestly. Between Dignitas and Obey Alliance, they have the possibility of potentially facing off, depending on which seed they are, first or second, doesn't matter, but because there's still energy and rival that have to climb their way out of the gauntlet. It's very crazy that it's very likely that either energy or rival will not be going to Super Regionals right now. That's how insane this fall split has been. Super Regionals, Gauntlet, whatever we're talking about. It's all in the name of getting to HRX. You too can go to HRX using HiResExpo.com. That's where you can buy your tickets. Smite15 is the code to enter. It'll get you 15% off. Make sure you go and snag those while they're still available. And if you're still sitting at home, maybe you want to try and get some of those uh, fantasy points, some worshipers, some XP, some favor. We've got a promotion for you there as well. Double everything, party of two. Tolly, I hear you're playing with Ron this weekend, and um, I just have one question for you. Yeah. Why? They are making me. 
Ah, I see. Did they promise you extra gems? They did, actually. I'm, I'm a sucker for gems. I'm going to sell it every single time for a little bit of gems. But, man, run, gems, run, gems. It's know. worth it. Trust me. Just do that. it. Take the plunge. If you say so. This weekend, the final weekend of the SPL in the Season 4. It's going to be a good one. Elevate versus Valence Squadron. These two teams competing for that top four spot. Same can be said for Rival and Energy. And then Obey and Dig to close it out on Saturday. And that's before all the sick games in NA on Sunday. I just can't believe my eyes. Looking at these uh, current schedule here. And Sunday's going to be an epic battle as well, honestly. I'm really looking forward to these two powerhouses, specifically e United against Luminosity. W Tolly, before we close it out, I got to ask you, do you have a, a one matchup that you're looking forward to more than any other? Can you pick one? No, honestly. Like, you're talking about player versus player matchup? No, or team teams, versus team? teams. Energy I mean, versus rival. I think, that's a, versus rival. I think that's a good call. I mean, yeah, seeding's fun and very important for those top two positions, but, man, when you're talking about energy versus rival, these two teams who always seem to have great sets against one another, they're competing for their lives to go on <sighs> into Super Regionals and try and avoid that gauntlet. Thanks so much for watching on the final Thursday of season four regular season spl make sure you join us on saturday 1 p.m eastern trust me you're going to want to be there from everyone here at high res studios casters production especially raymond pecky's always especially raymond pecky's thanks for watching and we'll see you saturday